everyone. I'd like to thank AIS for inviting New Beauty today to share our vision and a glimpse into the future of beauty. Oh, slide behind. So as many of you know, New Beauty launched in 2005 with a similar mission that we have today, and it's all about inspiring, educating, and guiding women to make smart and informed decisions with an anchor in aesthetics naturally. But over the last 15 years, we've certainly seen how aesthetics has changed within a woman's beauty, uh, beauty routine. So how do we predict future trends? With print, it's actually a lot trickier than digital. When you think about it, a consumer typically goes online because they're interested in learning about a procedure or having a procedure. So it's important that we have in information for them on newbeauty.com. But when you think about print, it's really about inspiring and getting people to discover things that they might not necessarily have thought they wanted. So we have to be very far ahead of the market, three, six, or even nine months sometimes. This is a great example of how last summer we predicted the clean German beauty trend when the New York Times just predicted it last month. So let's talk about some of the trends that I want to highlight today. And this happens to be the one that I'm most fascinated by. This is body positivity meets my body, my choice. And what we're seeing is, is that this is very much driven by millennials. Unfortunately, uh, Gen X and baby boomers are not as empowered by aesthetics, but millennials are demanding a more open dialogue and transparency. Obviously, social media is driving this conversation. Many of you may have seen Jen Atkins. She's a celebrity hairstylist. She recently posted her before and after photos from her rhinoplasty surgery. She has a huge social media following. Or there was a blogger from Dubai who actually did a makeup tutorial with two black eyes and a nose bandage. And while she didn't necessarily come out and say that she had surgery, there were a few negative comments popping up and then hundreds of positive comments where people were defending her because she wasn't necessarily trying to hide the surgery she had. So how do we continue this movement at New Beauty? And it's really simple. It's through just some editorial franchises. The first being Muse. Muse is where we celebrate women we love and the things that they love. But what we do is we highlight their dermatologists and their plastic surgeons alongside of their Pilates instructors and their hairstylist, further normalizing aesthetics within the beauty routine. Or then we have a, an editorial franchise called Holy Grail, where you would typically see something like a red Dior lipstick highlighted. But in our case, we can celebrate something like a neurotoxin. This brings us to the second trend that I'd like to highlight today, and this is around global innovation. Obviously, social media is allowing us to look to the rest of the world to be inspired by their procedure and treatment trends. As we see in this photo, Kate Moss was leaving and was shot by a paparazzi leaving her physician's office. As a consumer, if we dig a little bit deeper, we can actually find out that he happens to be a thread lift expert. So obviously, these are things that are easy to find. So let's take a look at what's happening around the world and what we're really excited by at New Beauty. The first uh, area is the United Kingdom. What we're seeing in the United Kingdom is something called myomodulation. It's where doctors are using HA filler underneath the chin to actually lift the cheeks. And UK beauty editors are fascinated by this because typically speaking, filler is used to change the look of the face, not necessarily the muscle behavior. So this is really in interesting and exciting. Or in South Korea, we're seeing large num numbers of Middle Eastern travelers going to South Korea specifically for nose lift threads. Nose thread lifts, sorry. And in Germany, as I mentioned before, there's definitely a movement towards clean beauty. But what we're seeing is now the number one procedure is the upper eyelid surgery versus liposuction, which is dramatically different. And the reason for that is because the physician is leaving more tissue in the eyelid, creating more of a natural look. So overall in Germany, there's a focus on using your own biological matter to achieve natural results. And then as many of you know, in Australia, they typically follow the US by about three years. With the internet and social media, this lag has definitely been shortened. But right now, the Brazilian butt lift is on the rise there. The interesting thing about this is because of all the safety concerns in the US, they're actually ahead of that versus 
where we were or where we are. And in Colombia, it's no surprise that body contouring is the number one treatment based on the climate, but believe it or not, vaginal rejuvenation is more prevalent there than anywhere else in the world. And in China, double eyelid surgery and rhinoplasty have always been the number one treatments, but what we're seeing now is, is that neck lifts and facelifts are taking over the spot of number one and number two. And what remains to be seen is whether people who haven't had procedures before are going right to neck lift and facelift, or there just have been so many people that have already had eyelid surgery and nose lifts, or nose uh, rhinoplasty. And then finally, here in the US, globally, we are seen as overfillers. We don't necessarily, or we're not seen as embracing natural beauty. What we do at New Beauty to try to really debunk that myth is to show a range of outcomes and make sure that the, the patient knows that it's really key in choosing the right professional because they may want something more natural on one end of the spectrum or they may want something more transformative at the other end of the spectrum. And then this brings us to the final trend that I wanted to review today, and this is about safety. And I think I heard Bill speak about this in the opening um, discussion. This is obviously a major concern for our industry, and what we're seeing is this false sense of confidence among consumers based on a lot of do-it-yourself or at-home treatments. What we see is consumers are buying filler internationally and self-injecting. They're buying micro-needling devices through diversion on Amazon and doing them at home. Take this one step further, and med spas and estheticians are seen as being or having as much expertise as board certified physicians. Obviously this is a huge problem and something that as an industry we need to get ahead of and this goes way beyond the Groupon for aesthetic procedures. And then finally also within safety, we're seeing a lot of celebrities articulate not such great results from aesthetic treatments and the media is obviously having a field day and proliferating that, that information. I think what we need to do as brands is get ahead of this because what we see happening is the consumer will start to look and, and ask the brand or the paint versus the painter or the physician. So this goes back to that transparency conversation. It's important that we're upfront about side effects and that we open the dialogue and have the conversation because we do see this as becoming a, a trend. And I guess the most important thing that I want to leave you guys with today is please continue to look at New Beauty as a different media partner. We're in this with you. We are in the aesthetics business. Without you, we cannot predict trends and we cannot continue to emphasize things like safety or how important it is to see a board certified physician. So please share comments, reach out to us. We want to hear your feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you.